The rug was pulled out from underneath her. She didn't feel confident. She didn't know if she could make it. Yet, she rose like the phoenix, leading herself and her family to a new beginning. And you can too. Are you ready? Cornelia Stephanie's show, Lady Boss, knows what women want to be free to speak their voice, live in financial freedom, and build businesses that radiate wealth, leaving legacies we can be proud of. Join Cornelia, Chris, Dana, Diane, and Darlene the first and fourth Friday every month as they raise the roof to inspire confidence in all women. Welcome everyone to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. I'm with my beautiful co-host, Dana Terrio. Welcome, Dana. Hi, Cornelia. Thanks. Thanks so much. It's always nice to get that intro. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful to be here today because we have an exciting show planned for our listeners, for our beloved audience. We are uh, Handle the Lump and Heal Your Life Part 7. That's, that's what we're doing. Handle the Lump, Heal Your Life Part 7. I mean, we've been, over the last seven shows, have been bringing you extraordinary topics on how to take any, any challenging situation that you may find yourself in with your health, whether that's cancer or hormones or weight loss, Whatever it is that you're faced with right now, we have the show so that you can discover some of the answers that may support you in becoming a self-healing agent. I mean, that's, that's what we're doing. We're all taking the reins on our own healing. And it's, it's a perfect support to become empowered and really change uh, the story of your life. Today's, today's topic is uh, exactly timely again, and so we're talking about what does your weight have to do with disease? Is there a link between what you weigh and your risk of getting cancer? Are your genes and your weight faded by a family history of disease or obesity? What does diabetes have to do with cancer? And why does the link between blood sugar and disease matter more than ever? Is having one disease like heart disease, diabetes, a setup for a subsequent secondary disease like cancer? How come willpower won't do it? We have the answers. The question remains, is it easy to live a nutritious lifestyle with weight loss, management protocol, for sustainable shifts in health and healing? It is with the sexy diet. I can't wait to hear about this one. <laughs> Our special guest today is gonna share with us her weight loss weapons for the holiday season. And Dana is going to introduce us to our very special guest that is going to come on in segment, in the next segment. What Dana and I are gonna do now is we're gonna talk about over the last seven months, all of the ways on we've what we've become empowered into take the reins on our own healing and to discover that taking taking action on your health it's a skill right dana it is we learned that and it's nice that we can repeat it as our monthly mantra from dr maureen that health is a skill it's not an event it's a process and like anything it's about cultivating the habits so we're learning so it's more um you know, and Chris Carr says too, it's more practice over perfection. It's progress over perfection. Yeah. Baby steps, increments. We can yeah. do this. <laughs> yeah. So it, at any, any point in time, you know, when you're faced with um, your body's talking to you and there are, uh, there is a situation in your life where you're really being asked to take a look at um, what's out of balance, right? And then to uh, you know, to open yourself up to the greater healing that can actually happen. And even last night, I was at a meetup group. I lead the spiritual group here in town. And one of the women was sharing her success story of a diagnosis um, that she um, recently received and, you know, with uh, bladder cancer and that it's now completely clear and clean and, um, you know, having the tumors removed and how her new declaration now is that she's not a cancer person. And I, I like that because it's, you know, she's informing her body template 
of um, you know what 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 she's doing now with with her lifestyle and with you know we know that thoughts and emotions have a lot to do with it. We know that nurturing and self care have a lot to do with it. And like some of the other experts that you've brought on over the last seven months, Dana, from Dr. Uh, Maureen to Dr. V to Dr. Ann, Ann uh, there, there has been so much that we've all had in common when it comes to uh, our thoughts and our emotions and our diet and our lifestyle, right? Right. Uh, we had Dr. V talks about a healing mindset. Our guest today, Summer's really just chief and champion at cultivating a, a really empowering mindset too. Um, Dr. Maureen as well. And Bruce Lipton, he really talks about the genes. Some genes that are healthy, living in a not so healthy environment can become diseased. Now, other genes that may not be so healthy, that are damaged in DNA, given the proper environment, they can grow out of it. So it's so much mind over matter. We're learning that with all of our guests. Yeah. And I talked about it about Dr. Joe Dispenza. There's so much information right now that can inform us. And I inform my body too, like your friend from last night. I don't identify with the cancer patient. That's why I'm really deliberate talking about the consumer mindset versus a patient mindset versus, you know, what will you do for me? What will you do for me? Where the consumer is go out and get it. Like you say, harness it. So it's, it's just a shift and it's sustainable and it takes practice. It's a skill and it's a new habit and looking at things in a new way where before we were unconscious and now we're taking the reins. We're like, we're becoming the, the pioneers in uh, turning our, we're not victims to our bodies anymore. And that takes a lot of consciousness and it, it takes, you know, presence to develop new ways of living and being. And that's why this is so exciting. And I just want to let our beloved audience know that if you have not seen the past shows that we've done on the Handle Your Lump, Heal Your Life series, please go to the YouTube channel and you can look at Cornelia Stephanie YouTube and you're going to see all the past shows that we've done on this series and all the doctors and all the expert advice and wisdom and gifts that are given there that you can use to support yourself if you're faced with, with anything in your life that's calling for your attention right now. And that is to take really, really good care of your body, right? That's what we want to do because our body is what houses our spirit. And that is how we um, you know, leave a legacy that we can be proud of through the way that we nurture and take care of ourselves. And that's also setting a, a beautiful example for the children. And, uh, you know, taking good care of ourselves is important. So I'm super excited because I want to let the audience know about another super fantastic event that's coming up <laughs> that I'm so excited about. Summer, I'm sure you know who I'm talking about when I mentioned the word, the name, Christiane Northrup. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. She's a pioneer and she's a leader, a New York Times bestselling author and best, uh, I mean, OBGYN world leader on women's empowerment and women's health. She's going to be coming on to the Cornelia Stephanie show. Yay. On December the 27th. So I want you all to put that count that date on your calendar and come join us live in the studio audience right here. So you can get your ticket right now and go to CorneliaStephanieVIP.com. And I welcome you to join us, Summer, if you would like to be a part of the audience to, um, you know, ask uh, Christiane some questions during that time, because we're going to um, put on an amazing show. We're going to be talking about her new book, and that is The Energy, uh, Energy Vampire, An Empathic Guide to... Not Dog. What is yeah. it? I've got it right here. Yeah. It is dodging energy vampires. Yeah. And it's the, for those empaths out there. And I know there's many people that are empathic out there that how not to let um, energy vampires drain you. And so this is her newest book and we're going to be promoting and talking about that. So that's on December the 27th at 12 noon Pacific time. So be sure to come and join us. You can get your ticket your live VIP ticket free at CorneliaStephanieVIP.com. I'm super excited about that. 
Okay, so what else do you want to say, Dana, about our last previous shows that um, you want to talk about our breast friend? Uh, you want to you want to share sure. that? We can do that because it's not just for October; it's all year long. So we have probably been very um, visible about it, uh, but as we should be. So this is our tool. Our movement is check your girls. We've been. I've been all over sending it out to loved ones. And um, yeah, this little tool uh, has exact replicas of cancerous tumors in this breast model that we can train ourselves because science says we can learn with the flats of our fingers. And this is the model that clinicians and physicians have learned on for 30 years. So it's tried and true. And it's brought to the market by our uh, beloved Dr. V. So this is very exciting. Yes, and let's tell the audience again where they can get that because this is, it's about uh, preventative maintenance and this is better than going to have a mammogram, in my opinion, um, you know, so it's, it's doing that breast care, that self-care every, all the time, at once a month at least, right? That's right. And you know, I've moved away from self-care and self-love. I like to call it self-honoring. <laughs> this really is, uh, and it develops intuition as a woman we can learn how to do this. We can learn what's happening in our body. And it just, imagine it just comes over time. And this is for, it's an equal opportunity training tool because it's for every woman, any age, there's no ethnic bias or propensity that it looks at. I mean, as soon as a girl gets a period, she can learn. And so it's wonderful to learn at a young age. So we can get this at uh, www.mybreastfriend.com forward slash Dana. Now that would be a great stocking stuffer for, for any woman, any woman to receive this to. to start. It comes in the pretty purple box here and it makes a wonderful gift um, because it's the gift of health. And as women, we're so used to handling things for other people and often self neglect is a big sad practice that happens all too often. And so it's a great gift for others, mother-in-law, daughter-in-law, mom yeah. and sister. It, it's great for anybody. Yeah. And even, you know, the, the, the young women that are now moving out into the world, the ones that are 17, 18, getting ready to move out and be on their own. This is a, a wonderful way that they can get, you know, practicing, taking care of themselves. I love the honoring uh, piece that that is so perfect because it's part of your new book that you're that you're writing. That's going to be coming out. What was on her honors is the name on of her honor. Yes. Yes. Uh, Yes, I love it. Empowering uh, women and girls to lead brilliant lives. Beautiful. Can't wait to get that copy. So I can't wait for you to introduce us to our guest. So let's take a break on the Cornelia Stephanie Show with my beautiful co-host, Dana Terrio. We'll be right back. Are you an entrepreneur who's struggling to be seen? Do you know deep in your gut that if you could just be seen and get your message out, that you'd easily reach your tribe? How wonderful would it be if a fairy godmother came along, waved her magic wand, and suddenly you were more than visible. You were dazzling. Would you sign up for that? Hi, I'm Deborah Lupien, spiritual teacher and international best-selling author of Akasha Unleashed, The Missing Manual to You. I'm here with the wonderful news that such a person actually exists. Her name is Cornelia Stephanie, and she's gifted at helping entrepreneurs become dazzling. I've watched her work her magic over and over to turn invisible entrepreneurs into dazzling stars who easily attract their ideal clients and have fun doing it. Not long ago, I was the recipient of her gift. As a guest on her show, Living Heaven on Earth, not only did we have fun, but Cornelia helped me get my message out to a wider audience, which resulted in a very nice spike of traffic to my website and more subscribers to my list. Did I mention it was incredibly easy? Cornelia's running a veritable media empire of uplifting programs. They cover a broad range of topics and have a large appreciative audience. That's a winning combination, folks. Guess what? Those shows need guests and hosts. Imagine after guesting on a few shows, moving up to hosting your own popular show, that is absolutely possible for you. So now you have a decision to make. Are you going to keep struggling on your own? Or are you going to sign up for some Cornelia Stephanie dazzling visibility magic? Email 
radio at corneliastephanie.com today. Welcome back to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. Dana Terrio, take us to our very special guest today that's going to tell us about amazing secrets and uh, weapons that we can use for not just the holiday season, but also in the days after the holiday season, right? That's right. Our guest today is going to help us honor health over the holidays, which can be stressful sometimes. So summer can help us with this. So Summer Peterson is the international best-selling author of the book, The Sexy Diet, host of the TV show, Wine Country Weight Loss with Summer Peterson, and founder of Body Soul Shine, which offers online weight loss, loss programs. With a master's degree in psychology, she is a weight loss expert specializing in how to speed up your metabolism and turn on your skinny jeans. She lives in the heart of Northern California wine country with her husband, Greg, and their two sons, Jude Schuyler, ages eight and five. And I want to say this is a very special treat for me because honor is um, summer. I'm honored to have summer. Summer's not just one of our special featured guests, but this is the first time I'm inviting a friend on. I love this woman. I got to know someone over the last couple of years, and really, she um, she's just so much more than a weight loss coach. And she's a beautiful girl, a California girl, and really, with her master's in psychology, she knows the psyche. So, welcome to the show, Summer. Dana, thank you, my friend. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, we're happy to hear you, uh, have you here because we met in San Francisco with our coaching community, then in Phoenix with our entrepreneurial community. There's so much I can say, but I'm going to let you give us the juicy dish. So um, thanks for coming and joining and tell us because what Cornelia was touching on about the family genes and about cancer. I mean, you have so much story. Your why is just really, it's epic. So Tell us a bit about you, Summer. Okay, thanks, Dana. Let me get into it. So it's true that I'm a weight loss coach. I feel like I'm a women's empowerment coach masquerading in a weight loss coach's body. Um, I, 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 I want to help women with their mindset, with their health, with their spirituality and all these areas. And this is a lifelong passion of mine and when I say a lifelong passion, it's, it's, it's so true. When I was 11 years old, my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer. And that is a very impactful experience for anybody to go through. Um, while all of my friends were, you know, doing their slumber parties and having, having fun, I was dealing with some real serious crisis um, at home with my mother. She had stage three cancer. Um, at that point, and um, it, it highly impacted me. Three years later, my mother's breast cancer metastasized. So she then had what, what is known as stage four cancer, where the oncologist says to her, I have good news for you. I have bad news. The, the bad news is that you have stage four cancer, but the good news is that you have one year to live. Oh. Now let that sit for you. you oh. Imagine having... Uh, at that point, I was a 14, a 14 year old daughter. My mother was in her 40s at the time. And it, it's just absolutely shocking and disturbing to hear those words. Um, there's, yeah, no words. You, you all get it. So I then living with this reality that it looks like my mom is going to die. My mother, however, she survived. Um, she was 17 years with cancer before she passed. And so she really beat the odds, and um, which is really, really incredible to have the experience, first of all, of going through life with having a mom who's like mind over matter. Mm -hmm. And she proved it to the oncologist time after time where she beat the, the odds. But also there was that piece of me from a very young age where I intuitively knew that there was a dietary piece that was um, affecting her, her cancer. And this is not to put the blame on my mother, but it's also not to put the blame on the genetics. It's, it, we like to look at cancer and all, all ailments, it's, it's a bigger picture. So it's not just one little thing. There's the spiritual aspect, the emotional aspects, there's the physical aspect. And I really knew at a young age that there was the physical piece that my mother was not attending to. While she had nailed down the mindset and, and a lot of the meditation piece, 
there was the thing, she was a sugar addict. Let's just be straight and clear. And, as, and when I was in the eighth, just in the eighth grade, well, a lot of the, the girls my age were asking their mothers to buy them Cosmopolitan magazine. I was asking my mother to buy me nutritional books. And I would read those books on the, in the evenings and on the weekends. And I was obsessed. I would ask her to buy me vitamins instead of makeup. I mean, I was really obsessed at a young age with getting the health piece. I actually became a vegetarian at a super young age. I had no mentors in my life that, um, that were vegetarian. And I had to defend myself at a very young age of like, when everybody challenged the young woman, like, where are you getting all your protein? And I, I got to defend myself with all of the, the few books out there. There was no internet back then. I'm a 43 year old woman. This is way before the internet. And there's just a few books out there with some rogue people defending these sorts of um, dietary strategies for health. And I, um, you know, it was, a, it, it, it was, it was quite a journey. Um, the other piece about my mother that highly impacted me is that she, she told me that when she turned 30, which was when I was born, so right after I was born, um, she put on weight and she was unable to ever, ever get that weight off. And she says that her metabolism slowed down. I know now what was going on with her is that she was probably eating way too much sugar. But I, back then, when I turned 30, so this was a few years after my mom had passed, I turned 30 and um, I put on 30 pounds in a very short period of time and I could not get that weight off. So I was living my mother's reality not only living in an overweight body, but then looking 10 years down the line, does this mean I'm going to get cancer as well? Because I have my mom's genes. I've inherited this. And I was um, terrified. I was, I was terrified. I did everything I could, first of all, to get the weight off, but I couldn't get those thoughts out of my head that, oh my gosh, when I turned 41, which was when my mother was diagnosed with her breast cancer, mm -hmm. am I going to get breast cancer as well? So I had a real huge incentive to take control of my health. And um, I was failing and struggling and really having a hard time. I was going to spin class. I was exercising like crazy. I was um, dieting doing all of, the, all of the strategies that they tell you to cut calories and to exercise more to lose weight. And, I, and the scale was only going up and going up. I was unable to exercise my way into my ideal body, uh, the, the wedding dress that I wanted to fit into on my wedding day. And then I got pregnant a year after I got married with my first son and I put on 50 pounds during the pregnancy. So then here I am with 80 excess pounds on this body. I mean, I birthed a few of those pounds out of me, but really I was like, super overweight and just miserable. And so it was actually between the birth of my first son and my second son that I, I got the strategy for weight loss that is also the anti-cancer strategy that we're gonna talk about on this show today. They are actually one and the same. And I, like I said, I masquerade as a weight loss coach, but it's, it gives me so much peace of mind that I give this information to women who wanna lose weight because it's also the same information that they need to take, take charge of their health and have the anti-tumor strategies. Yeah. It all goes together really well. That's right. Thanks for sharing, Summer, because that was the one-two punch. I couldn't wait for you to share that it's uh, an approach that's anti-cancer. It's um, really taking charge with an anti-cancer lifestyle and the mindset, because you were convinced that your metabolism, you thought your metabolism was broken, just like your mama. Yeah. So you thought at 30, it was just like, so it was effective. The evidence was there in front of me. My mom gained weight at 30. I gained weight at 30. It must be our genetic inheritance. We have a crappy metabolism that breaks at 30. The evidence was right there in front of me. So I thought, but it, 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 it turns out that's not the way I'm back in my ideal body weight after my high school body weight after having birthed two children and I'm 43 now, no cancer. I, I didn't inherit my mom's crappy genes. We just, she had turned on certain genes and I have turned them off. And it's because when you were young at that, at that young age, when your mom was first diagnosed with the news, that's when you decided at that point in time that, that you were going to change that program and not follow that 
those genes and not do do all of that. You were doing what women are innately able to do is to nurture and take care of themselves when when they have the right information. And that's what you wanted to do. You wanted to right away at, at, at that young age to, you know, not not follow uh, the whole system of, you know, Cosmopolitan magazine, but you were going the other direction because you were in a crisis. And that was, you know, you were seeing your mom suffer and you did not want to uh, create that for yourself. So you were breaking that cycle from that time on. Would you agree with that? That's exactly what it was. And a lot of this is unconscious. You don't realize it. We don't know when we're 11 or 14 years old that history repeats itself in our families. Our, and we're healing ancestral wounds in this lifetime right now. And I believe that my mom had carried a lot of wounds from her mom and previous generations. And we're breaking that cycle now. We're taking charge of our health now on a spiritual level, emotional, mental, and a physical level. Yeah. Wow. Can I ask, um, was your mom like, because when you were talking about the whole weight thing, you know, I didn't get it until really like right now, because I'm a big believer in the thought and the emotional piece and making sure that we think loving thoughts and that we, uh, you know, heal our emotional body and all of that. But I when listening to you talking, I'm actually thinking that the diet thing, the nutrition thing is actually first. So if we actually had have a healthy environment with our nutrition, from as, as a first thing, then we're naturally going to think loving thoughts and emotional well-being because of what we're putting into our body. Do you feel that that's true? I believe that the foundation of health really, it, it, I, I believe that there, you can't take one away from the other. I think that when the healthier you get on a physical level, the healthy you, healthier you are on a mental, emotional, and, and spiritual level. I know that to be true for myself. When I'm eating food, poor food quality, it clouds my mind and my emotions start to get stuck. I, I believe that they're, they're all interconnected. And also when I'm having an emotional, external emotional event that is clouding me emotionally, I easily can get kicked off of my physical eating. So I, I think that they're all so connected. We get to attend to all of them and not cut one of them off from the other. Although my expertise is the physical and I would love to talk more, go into real depth with it here. Um, I, I would never want you to just work on the physical and not the emotional mental, spiritual. That's right. That's what's beautiful and brilliant about you, Summer. I was promoting you as being psychologically savvy, empathic leader, because you're so much more than a weight loss coach. You're just really such an empower. And really for you, especially having that psychology piece, the psychology drives the physiology. And likewise, the physiology drives the psychology. And we've talked about this before, having food hangovers. It's just food really affects the mood. So they, it is. Just like I say, it's mind-body. It's not, they're not separate. They really, one drives the other. So we talked, we had a brilliant guest last time, Dr. Anna Kabeca, talking about hormones. So that was the, when I was talking about the promotion that it all, it all comes down to the hormones, really. You know all about this. And there's so much with all the diseases that are converging together now. Yeah. We talked a, a, a lot with brilliant doctors and all this cancer stuff, but it, especially this holiday time, it's nice to bring it back to basics. And your formula, the sexy formula is really, really just that. It's just sexy, simple. So why don't you tell us what, it, it's got the nice catchy acronym. Tell us what it's about. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So I created a weight loss system called the sexy diet. Sexy is an acronym for my four part weight loss system. I literally could have named it the fart diet. I just needed four words and I, four letters, excuse me for the word. And, and I, and I'm just being really silly right now, but the word sexy is fun. And I do speak to women and we all do want to have that fun, sexy attitude, but this has nothing to do with objectifying your body or looking like a Victoria's Secret model. So like, let's just make sure that we, we're not feeling like we need to do that. Sexy is just a fun acronym. So you can remember this four part weight loss system that will help you lose weight. And it will also be the anti-tumor strategy 
and the healthy, glowy skin strategy, all of the things that we do, that we women tend to really want, right? So we'll dig right in. And, and, and then I, and I, before I dig right in, actually, I just wanted to acknowledge, Dana, thank you for the compliment. I do want you to understand that this really is simple. Um, there's, we, we, we tend to like talk to doctors and citing clinical studies and getting in, into this kind of heavier medical stuff, but it really is simple. And so that's why I, I created this formula, the sexy formula to remind you just, it's, it's so accessibly simple. Mm -hmm. And so sexy, the acronym start, it starts with an S and that is, I alluded to this already with my mother, sugar and flour free. I call it sexy. We get to be sugar and flour free, or we get to elim either eliminate or dramatically reduce our intake of sugar and flour. These white powdery substances that are no good for us, they are man-made, this is not stuff from nature, that is just not good for us. And when Dana was talking about the hormonal connection, the reason why this is so critical for your hormones is because these foods whack them out. Just they put your hormones all out of whack, they lift up your insulin, and that just, just does a number on so many other hormones, cortisol and all these other hormones, leptin resistance, all of these things. You do not want to include sugar and flour in your diet because you're going to be a hormonal mess. And it makes you crave more food. It makes you what here, here's what here, here, let's do the simple part. Like I said, it's very, very simple. So, so put this in your mind right now, every time you eat sugar and flour, you are spraying miracle Grow on your fat cells. Sugar and flour spray miracle Grow on your fat cells. Put that together every single time you're eating sugar and flour, you're spraying miracle Grow on your fat cells. When you don't want your fat cells to grow and expand, reduce these, these foods. It's actually, they, they're metabolism slowing foods and everybody wants to know, how do I speed up my metabolism? It's not that we need to speed it up, it's that we need to stop slowing it down you're continually slowing down your metabolism with sugar and flour. So we're gonna eliminate that as much as possible. And when you start looking around your kitchen, for many people, they start thinking, uh-oh, that's a lot of food in my pantry and in my refrigerator that has sugar and flour in it. So what do I eat? And the E in sexy, so we're gonna travel along and spell out the word sexy together. And the E in sexy is eat more veggies. It's not that you're gonna replace every single dingle piece of food with a vegetable, but you're not eating enough vegetables. The truth is we're just not, we're supposed to be eating like eight to nine servings a day of fruits and vegetables. We should primarily be getting these from vegetables and most Americans are doing a dismal job and Canadians, excuse me, are doing a dismal job at this, um, not eating nearly enough vegetables. So I want you to look at, to reimagine the plate and instead of there being a meat, a potato, and a vegetable on it, which is the, your standard American dinner, um, we need to be looking at your, your plate should have a minimum of 50% being a vegetable and potatoes do not count. They are not a vegetable. <laughs> well, that's my parents. <laughs> yeah, right. I grew up with them being like a primary vegetable as well. But as we've learned, um, no, we, we, need to be, we need to diversify. And actually, let me get distracted for a minute of away from the sexy diet, the acronym itself, and another really important piece of my weight loss system that I lay out in my book, The Sexy Diet, is um, eating. What one thing that we want to turn want to do is to turn on our skinny genes. So let's go back to like the Bruce Lipton kind of genetics thing. So if you look at my eye, if you if you can, if you're not listening to this already, if you're looking watching this on YouTube, you can see my eye color is blue. And so you'd see, so you, so we believe like, okay, so she has the genetics for, for blue, blue eyes and other women here are having genetics from brown eyes or whatever. That's not how all of our genes work. And we've come to believe that that's how genes are. Like you got the, you got the obese gene, you got the skinny gene, you got the cancer gene, you got the, you got the heart disease gene. That's not how genes work. And if you, if you're, you're familiar with Bruce Lipton's work and other doctors who have even taken it further, there is something called genetic expression. And the number one way that we can turn on our skinny genes or turn off our obesity genes, because we are all born with it. 
So I was born with the blue, with the, with the obesity gene and the skinny genes and like a lot of other genes. The, the number one way that I can turn off the obesity gene and turn on my skinny genes is through diet. This is Dr. Zach Bush. This is Dr. Daniel Pompa. There's a ton of doctors who are doing clinical research on th this topic. The number one way that you can take charge of your health by turning on your skinny genes is through your diet. And we, what, one of the main things that you, you all have probably studied is the blue zones, where we know that there's certain areas in the world where, where more people live to be 100 than ev anywhere else in the world. These blue zones, there's these 100-year-olds are running around like healthy 60-year-olds living alone, or excuse me, living in community, but not, not living in assisted, no assisted living. They're, they're exercising. Yeah. They're cooking. They're, they're, they're very active in their community. There's no cancer. There's no heart disease. There's, there's these certain pockets. And so, of course, the scientists are flocking to these zones. Like, what is this fountain of youth? What are they doing? And you'll find, you know, this one is a vegetarian one and this one is a meat eating one. And they're really having a hard time figuring out what, what is the common solution. One of the common things is that they do live in community. So there is that emotional, socio emotional piece about it being in community is a really important piece. Another piece that we've learned from these blue zones is that all of these areas in the world where people are living past 100, very healthy with no cancer, is that they're all eating a diet that's high in polyphenols. Polyphenol, that word is a very, it may be a new word to you. You've heard of the word antioxidant. Everybody knows we're supposed to be eating more antioxidants. Polyphenols are just a classification of antioxidants. A specific classification that we know now turns on your skinny genes. I call it skinny genes. Other people are going to call it longevity genes. Or health genes. Or but, health yeah. genes. Or anti-cancer genes. And yeah. all, you know, all of this, I because I'm a weight loss expert, I'm going to call it skinny genes. It's all of it. It's like you want to turn on your skinny genes, your longevity genes, your health genes, all of the anti-cancer genes. These, the, this food in abundance and diversity in your diet is going to make a difference. Where do we find polyphenols? Well, there are an abundance in fruits and vegetables, herbs and spices, coffee, green tea. And so uh, I, we, we can go into a list of some of the, the really important foods to be including. Um, I take polyphenol supplements. Um, I, I, I drink green tea. I drink a little bit of coffee. I want a diversity. I actually don't believe that red wine is actually the best way to get your polyphenols. I know <laughs> some people are into that. I don't drink wine every day, um, although I live in wine country and I do enjoy it occasionally. Um, but there's there's a lot of better ways that we can get resveratrol. Um, and some supplements will have it in a lot higher quantities than in the red wine. Um, but there's it's, it's critical that we turn on our skinny genes at these longevity genes as well. And it's not um, part of the acronym, but I did want to take that sidetrack. So it does tie into the vegetables. Um, e, e, the sexy is eat your vegetables. A lot of vegetables have polyphenols as well. So just eat diversity. Diversity is king. Don't eat the same thing every single day. So S is for sugar. E is for eat vegetables. Yeah. X. X. This is, um, so when you reduce your sugar and eat your vegetables, that's how we're going to speed up your metabolism again, or just stop slowing it down. Basically the X is how we're going to burn off the fat. The X stands for extend your period of fasting, mm. the intermittent fasting. So I've studied a lot of, a lot of different doctors are doing a study on the intermittent fasting. We have, um, Dr. Walter Longo, um, phenomenal clinical research coming out of, of his labs. We have Dr. Sachin Panda, who's working a lot with the circadian rhythms. And I'm going to cite a, a little bit of their research here. Um, they're both interested in anti-cancer and health and longevity and weight loss. Um, they're not typically super weight loss, but it's, a, it's the side benefit. And we want to be at our ideal body weight for, um, for maximizing your health. So extending your period of fasting, what does that look like? If you just want to drop a few pounds, Sachin Panda will have you begin, and he's at the Salk Institute in San Diego, he'll have you begin by don't eat anything after dinner. So this is where I am, so I am so passionate about step one, 
Always go back to this, stop eating after dinner, not even a single blueberry. Every single one of my clients, it's all over my book, all over everything that I put it. Number one step with intermittent fasting is just stop eating after dinner, not even a single blueberry. Get that one in your head, just like eating sugar and flowers, like spraying miracle Grow on your fat cells. Next thing I want you to always remember is stop eating after dinner, not even a single blueberry. That alone is going to have a massive impact on your circadian rhythm or you're gonna sleep better. Sleep is another critical component. I'm not gonna tangent about the sleep piece, but we all can do a lot better with our sleep. So we need to really attend to deep sleep, not the quantity of sleep, but the quality of sleep. And that's where eating late is going to impact our quality of sleep. We wanna be able to sleep deeply. We wanna not be digesting food while we're sleeping. We want our body to be able to repair all of our systems. Um, including our immune system, which is so very important for anti-cancer strategy. And once we've nailed down not eating anything after dinner, not even a single blueberry, of course, drink your water, drink some herbal tea if you need to, but um, then we can go into more fasting. Um, I love to ease people in. Some people um, will do really benefit really well with eating in that eight hour window. We call that time restricted feeding. So we will eat, um, from like 10 to six every day. Drink your coffee, drink your tea in the morning, but don't eat calories. And if you eat in that eight hour window, that is really gonna have a positive impact on you. If you want some really big girl weight loss, then we do a couple, we throw in a couple of 24 hour fasts non, on non-consecutive days, say a Monday and a Thursday. We will stop eating after, if, if Monday and Thursday are your two fasting days, you stop eating after dinner on Sunday, not even a single blueberry, and you don't eat dinner, you don't eat again until Monday dinner. And this is going to give the, the two punch here is where not only are we putting our body into fat burning mode. So instead of the calories that we're burning are not coming from breakfast and lunch, rather they're coming from a breakfast and a lunch that we over ate last year. So we're burning those calories. It, your fat cells are just calories being weighted, weighed, just being stored as, it's, it's fat being stored as calories. So you wanna burn access, to access those calories, we need to stop eating and then our body will release the fat as calories. And it's every bit as wonderful energy as eating carbohydrates and today. Eat, burning your fat is very, very, very healthy. It's actually a very clean way to burn your, burn your energy. So that is going to burn fat, but also there's a really wonderful thing that it does and it puts your body in something called autophagy, 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 autophagy with, it is the Latin root or the Greek root, excuse me. And it's self eat. It's your body's self eating system. So it sounds a little bit gross and it seems like a really weird thing. Why would you want your body to eat itself? But what's happening and let's make it really, really simple is that your body, we always, we need our amino acids, right? We need some protein. Everybody know we all, I, I've been told since I was 12, when I was a vegetarian, <laughs> like, you need your protein. So yeah, we do need, we do need protein. We can't survive without it. But when we stop eating protein or stop eating anything, but it, it, especially when we're on these protein fasts, um, our body has to forage for amino acids. And so where does it get its amino acids from? It actually eats away the dead and dying parts of the cells. So it's a self cleaning, self eating, but it's self cleaning and it's getting its amino acids from this, these dead and dying cells that we don't want. And what are cancer cells? They're, they're disrupted cells that are replicating themselves. So when we turn on our body's natural anti-tumor system of autophagy, self-eating, we eat away the, can you're, you're letting your body eat away the cancer and your fat. So it's this, the win, win, triple trifecta win. You're, you're getting, you're getting your, your skin is starting to glow more. Your, your fat is trimming away and your body is eating its own tumors, potential tumors before they start replicating, before these cells start replicating and in, in becoming tumors. And this is a system that 
we've evolved to become because humans have never up until about a hundred plus years, a little, little more than a hundred years ago, there was no such thing as refrigeration and freezing. We had to forage for food just a few hundred years ago. And so the fact that we have the abundance of food, we've forgotten our, but we've forgotten how to fast, but you look, a lot of the major religions will have the fasting protocol still set in which is extremely a healthy thing. And we should be following these fasting rules. And if you're not following them as a part of your religion, then be definitely put it in now. Start fasting now by trim, trim down your waistline, do the intermittent fasting and the natural autophagy to eat away those bad cells. And then I also wanna just point out that um, Dr. Walter Longo, his clinical research is just stellar um, in anti-cancer. He's really all about the anti-cancer. And his protocol is to do a five-day water fast every quarter for if, if you're dealing with cancer. Mm -hmm. He also has put his name behind something called Prolon, uh, P-R-O-L-O-N, Prolon. It's a, it's, a it's a fasting mimicking diet, and he's written a book about this. If you buy this, um, his food, it's a five days of food. It's a box of packaged food. It's a plant-based diet where you eat. It gives you a small amount of calories and a very small amount of protein in, in these five days of food and with, with great instructions on how to use it. I've tried it a couple of times. I think it's pretty cool. Um, but it puts your body into that autophagy for those five days. And it mimics what would happen if you did five days of a water fast. So if you're intimidated to do a five day water fast, which I've done, and it does take so much mindset to really get yourself through it. So if you're intimidated by that, but you really want to get the big, big benefits of fasting for five days for the anti-tumor, big fasting, big autophagy, then look into Walter Longo's Prolon. I'm not affiliated at all. I'm just really promoting it because I think it's something that we can really benefit from if you really if you want to fast and are intimidated to do a five day water fast yourself. Yeah, um, give us give us the last letter. Oh, uh, why? Yes. Why? Okay. So let's go back to the hormones. So um, everybody says that uh, people used to tell us that fat makes you fat. Um, and Dana had talked about this um, recently where fat actually makes you full. So why is yes to healthy fats? I'm not saying go eat a bunch of cheeseburgers and get all your saturated fats. I'm saying um, that having healthy fats in your diet, such as avocado and olive and olive oil and um, nuts and seeds, and um, to some extent, some, some saturated fat is okay for you not you don't want to like have too much of it. We, I really like to focus a lot on the mono unsaturated fats, but why it really, when you're feeling the intense hunger, um, the fire, I, I experienced, I used to experience hunger as like a fire in my belly. It was so intense. And I just had to feed that, feed that flame. And when you eat fat, it just, it's the fire extinguisher. It puts out the hunger hormone. It's the most incredible macronutrient fats. It's this incredible macronutrient that puts out the hunger and it makes you feel fuller longer. It gives you us, it gives us this phenomenal sustained energy. And um, I just would never want to be on a fat-free diet. I cannot imagine why anybody would ever do it. So I say, so we finish off the why, say yes to healthy fats. I also like to go back to E with in sexy, which is everybody's least favorite step of the sexy diet, which is eat more vegetables, right? Nobody wants to eat too many vegetables, but when you pair your veggies with a healthy fat, it makes your vegetables just taste so glorious. And so always remember, pair your healthy, your healthy fats and your healthy vegetables, and it's just a win-win. You're gonna feel sustained energy and you're not going to be hungry fat makes you full it doesn't make you fat sugar makes you fat the essence the sugar and flour is what's going to make you fat that's right thanks summer and this, the avocado i'm all a big champion of the avocado now because whether it be a half one a full one if you have it at lunch it sustains till dinner yes. dr anna quebeca says that snacking after 40 is not so forgiving in the afternoon and it's rich in fiber it's blood sugar balancing it's just like the the champion fruit of all. And I wanted to speak to um, 
estrogen because of the fact that gets, yeah, we're running out of time, but I want you to talk about the hormones and estrogen dominance because, yeah. okay, one thing I wanted to say too, to increase, um, let's see, okay, never mind, that's going to be decide. Tell, tell us about the estrogen dominance. Yeah. So we know that it, the, you know, the American cancer association will even say estrogen dominance is going to, um, you know, testing with estrogen dominance is going to have a higher rate of breast cancer, especially, um, recurrence of breast cancer. Yes. And so when we have breast cancer, the what last thing we want to do is have a recurrence. We do not want it to go to stage four. And so keeping your estrogen levels down, it's just the no brainer. And so Interestingly, it, there's just, it's so simple. There's a direct correlation with body weight and higher estrogen and the higher body weight you have, the more estrogen your body's going to make because you you don't need this excess weight and it's just creating, it's more, more body weight for your body to produce estrogen. So to keep your estrogen levels down, we want to get you back to your ideal body weight, which is probably the weight you were at in high school. Um, <laughs> which seems really hard to believe for so many women, but we can actually get there at any age. And so delete, the best thing to do is to fall really to follow this sexy diet, to reduce your sugar and flour, increase your, your vegetables. And some people also, including myself, I increase, um, my fiber levels by eating prebiotic fiber. You can find things like pre prebiotic fiber supplements. Um, I put that powder in a smoothie. I want to get as much fiber in my system as possible because it's not just about eating vegetables and fat. We need to have a lot of, uh, lots of fiber. We're, we're just not getting enough fiber in our diet. So getting, so eating a lot of fiber, prebiotic fiber is something to really look into increasing in your diet. That also helps to make you feel fuller. Um, did you have a question, Cornelia? I do. I want to know where do, where do we get a copy of your book? What's the oh. name of the book exactly? Where do we get a copy of it and your website? Yeah. So my book is The Sexy Diet. Um, and my name is Summer Peterson. It's all over Amazon. It's an international best-selling book. And so ordered on Amazon today. It's yeah. a fun, quick read. Um, and my website is bodysoulshine.com. I'm all about the body, healing the body and the soul. You never want to leave the soul out. So S-O-U-L, bodysoulshine.com. And what was your last question, Cornelia? I forgot. I'm, I'm on your website right now. I'm going, yeah, that's where I am. So sorry about that. That's all good. Yeah. Yeah. So really just follow, make it really simple with the sexy diet. Start with reducing sugar and flour and start with don't eat anything after dinner, not even a single blueberry. Those two things right there are going to have a massive impact on your life. Slow and steady wins the race. Don't try to do everything at once. Lots of self-love, compassion, have a, have an accountability buddy doing this with you. It's going to make your life so much more fun to have a friend to do follow the sexy diet with. Thank you so much, Summer Peterson, Dana Terrio. We are complete for today. Thanks everybody for tuning in, for listening. We'll see you again next time. Thanks everybody. Thanks. Hi, my name is Janet Hickox and I want to tell you a little story about a story and how my friend Cornelia Stephanie helped me through to the other end of that story. I have gone from the dark of a story I was telling myself that wasn't true to the light of optimism to see my way out of where I was and to where I want to go. And it all started with uh, her scheduling a session for me to help me reclaim my money or my financial empowerment. Up until that point, I had been telling the story that my business was dying, that my business was not successful anymore. And the more I tried to figure out what was going on, the worse I felt about it. And when I had to get ready to do the session with Cornelia, she asked me to go look at the numbers and where I was uh, through the year to date. And then also to come prepared with a number that I wanted to uh, raise my income to. Well, I was quite comfortable with that part, right? I knew where I wanted to be. Uh, what I wasn't comfortable with doing is going and looking up those numbers. But I made myself do it, even though I tried to backpedal my way out of the session. Um, she didn't know that, but I was going to try to get myself out of the session. And I looked up those numbers 
And it was incredible that I discovered through that process that my business wasn't dying. In fact, I was doing 12% better than I had the year before. So I was shocked. I was shocked literally at the power of the story that I had been telling for months. But more than that, I was shocked that I had allowed myself to get there. And uh, later in that day when I had my session with Cornelia, she pointed out some very obvious things like, how are you going to get where you want to go if you don't know where you want to go? How are you going to get there if you don't have the goals written out, if you don't have it uh, set up so that you know where you are and where you're going to go? Totally makes sense, right? If I, and I had been in business, uh, somebody else's business as a sales manager for years, and I, I was a national sales manager. <laughs> I had awards for sales management. I had business awards because of numbers. And yet when it came to doing my own business, I totally forgot all that I'd ever learned. So by the time Cornelia working with me in just one session, got me to look deeper at the numbers and where did I want to go and actually, you know, claiming where I wanted to go. Um, I was filled with a sense of optimism and hope like you can't believe. It was like everything shifted for me. And I am so looking forward to our continued sessions to see how far I can really push myself to get where, I, where I've only dreamed of being, where I've never taken the dream and actually brought it into concrete existence. So thank you, Cornelia, for the work that you're doing out there. I appreciate it, and I can't wait to see where I go from here.